Holobus benched. Robertson benched. Hazard not even on a team sheet. Wow. With the 10th game of the season completed, let's take a look at how my team performed and my transfer thoughts for game week 11. In order to gain some cash in the bank, ahead of game week 10, I decided to exchange with Charleston for Newcastle midfielder Kennedy. Hollabas and Robertson didn't feature for game week 10, and thus Johnny and Wan Basakar came off the bench. For game week 10, I got 64 points, improving my overall ranking by 1000 places. But in the My FPL Strategy League, my position has slightly dropped. Shout out to Nathan White, who is now the new mini league leader. Now let's take a look at how my team performed and my transfer thoughts for game week 11. Man City's early goal was just about enough to beat Spurs 1-0. Edison had a good game. He was involved in City's opener and was quick off his feet to deny Harry Kane's big chance opportunity. His overall performance earned him two additional points and at the end he returned a solid eight points. City faced struggling side Southampton next, a fixture on paper that looks promising. Thus, without question, Edison will feature my starting lineup for game week 11. Wolves suffered their first back to back defeat, losing 1 0 away to Brighton. Johnny had an OK game, registering 3 attempted assists, 3 key passes with a pass accuracy of 96%. He appeared on a box on a couple of occasions, but to no effect. At the end, the Spaniard only returned 2 points for match appearance. The Wanderers welcomed Spurs next before they played a tough away match against Arsenal. With 2.3 mil in the bank, having two Wolf defenders in my squad feels a little heavy, thus I'm contemplating upgrading him to a premium defender. Doherty misses a big chance in the 1-0 defeat to Brighton. In all fairness, Doherty had a very good game. He was at the heart of everything positive from Wolves. He constantly made himself an outlet, recording 6 shot attempts, 2 on target with 2 attempted assists. He should have really scored missing a big chance in the first half shooting just past the far post. Doherty is up against Spurs next, a tough fixture on paper. Personally, Doherty passes the eye test and I'm comfortable for him to start in my team for game week 11. Crystal Palace scored twice from the spot to gain a draw against Arsenal. Wan Basaka actually had a fine display. He was defensively solid winning the majority of his battles. He was a threat going forward and managed one shot attempt albeit off target. But despite the good performance, due to conceding two goals, the young Englishman only returned a single point. Crystal Palace have a tough run of fixtures. They face Chelsea, Spurs and Man United in the next three. Thus Wan Basaka's starting spot in my team looks less likely, and could be the case for the next three game weeks. A late goal earns Leicester City a draw in a 1-1 game against 10 men West Ham. Madison had an OK display. Didn't have much of the ball in the first half, but got more involved in the second. He had three shot attempts on goal, none hitting the target, with four attempted assists. At the end, the midfielder returned two points from match appearance. The Foxes' next five games on paper look very desirable, playing Cardiff next before they welcome Burnley at the King Power Stadium. Does it feel sensible to hold on to Madison for now? The Magpies hold on to a goalless draw against Southampton. Kennedy had a frustrating game giving away a possession at time. He struggled to produce any offensive threat, recording no shot attempts on goal. But for the clean sheet, the Brazilian returned three points. On paper, Newcastle have a good run of fixtures, playing Watford next at home before they welcome Bournemouth. Kennedy at 4.9 mil was brought in due to Newcastle's upcoming fixtures, as well as to free up some funds in order to improve my team elsewhere. Hopefully this will pay off in the long term. Chelsea puts Burnley to the sword, beating the Cherries 4-0. The third most popular captain ahead of game week 10 was not present in Chelsea's starting 11, nor was he present in Chelsea's substitution bench. I had Hodgeberg from Southampton on my bench, but unlucky for me, Hodgeberg was ruled out for illness and didn't participate in the 0-0 draw against Newcastle. So as a result, I got 0 points. Chelsea faced Crystal Palace next, a fixture on paper ranked as a desirable match. However, the last meeting between the two have been tight affairs. Crystal Palace would have gained confidence from the draw against Arsenal, thus I suspect this game to be a lot tougher than it looks. The 
Red eased past Cardiff, scoring four goals to one at Anfield. Salah had a top-class performance, scoring a fine goal inside 10 minutes and producing two late assists in Liverpool's third and fourth. It looks to be very close to Salah of old. The display earned him two additional bonus points and as my captain, the Egyptian returned a whopping 30 points. The red face Arsenal next, a match on paper ranked as a tough fixture. But in the last two meetings between the two, Liverpool has scored a total of seven goals. Salah scoring two. Aguero blanks in the 1 0 win against Spurs. Aguero had a quiet game, didn't see much of the ball. He had one clear chance in the second half, but his attempt lacked conviction and was easily saved by the goalkeeper. At the end, the Argentina only returned two points for match appearance. City work on Southampton next. Aguero has delivered attacking returns in every home game so far this season and is likely to lead the poll for captaincy for game week 11. Wilson doubles in a 3-0 win against Fulham. Wilson had an exceptional performance, scoring from the penalty spot in the first half. He caused the defenders problems throughout the match. His slide tackle in the second half brought about the counter-attack leading to Bournemouth's second and absolutely hammered his shot for Bournemouth's third. His display earned him all three bonus points, returning a solid 13 points. Bournemouth's next fixture is a tough home match against Man United. The Chairs have failed to score against the Red in the last two meetings between the two. Mitrovic's goal drought continues, losing 3 0 to Bournemouth. Mitrovic started off the game well, but too often he was forced to track back to break up Bournemouth's attack. For long periods of the game, the Serbian was left isolated in the final third and could only record two attempts on goal, none hitting the target. To make matters worse, with less than five minutes remaining, the striker was booked. And at the end, Mitrovic only returned a disappointing one point. Fulham play Huddersfield next, before they play a tough away match against Liverpool. Huddersfield has only kept one clean sheet so far this season. Does I think I'm willing to give the Serbian one last try? So moving on to my transfer thoughts for game week 11. Bringing in Kennedy ahead of game week 10 was to allow the opportunity to upgrade one of my defenders to a premium asset. At present, I'm contemplating two options. The first option would be to upgrade Johnny from Wolves to Mendy. Or the second option would be to exchange Holler Bass from Watford to Alonso. I'm slightly leaning towards option one, with Wolves' next two fixtures being tough on paper. Furthermore, bringing in Mendy will ensure I have some money left over in the bank, which could prove vital in future transfers. If I do decide to bring in Mendy, I would probably play a 4-3-3 formation with Hazard and Holabaz returning into the team. For captaincy, I'm likely to follow the crowd and go for the reliable at-home player Aguero. Please note my team selection is not locked in. And thus, if you would like to see my final team ahead of Gamer 11, be sure to follow me on Twitter. All my details in the description below. And that's all from me today, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.